Do you still remember this lovely place? The wonderful Oak Street City Zoo we once played a couple of years ago? Well, I said that. I don't want to call it end end. It's actually an end for the moment. Well, that was a long moment, wasn't it? Today we're back and we're going to fix Oak Street Zoo. It's gonna be exciting. It's the first episode of some where we're going to fix up this very hippo habitat in front of us. I've been doing this more than two years ago and it is really not good. It's really bad. Honestly, it's one of my most uh, bad habitats I've ever done in so many ways. I'm going to explain in the video, but now let's jump in and do the refurbishment. Okay, so first things first, this habitat has many, many issues and I'm gonna pinpoint those issues now a little bit, but I'm going to talk to you more about those at the end of the video in the real time part. Uh, the habitat is not going to be fully finished because it needs to be tied into the area. So there's more than just this habitat, but let's start with the most obvious. I made this whole thing for the overpath and see this video is also, partially a reason why YouTube at some point is super annoying. This video, and I, you know, I feel totally confident to say that, has been one of my worst ever made. It's not that I at this time meant to do a bad video, but looking back at it, I can very well say I tried to do something which kind of worked out. So I wanted to use or abuse the technique, uh, how you can make these tunnels and, you know, making people go under the water volume, which kind of worked, but the rest of this work was really not there. And it's it's been one of these examples where the franchise mode disease, as I call it, um, creeped into me, where I just wanted to finish the episode in the given time rather than making something really good. So one element of the whole thing is really good, and that is this overpath over here with the hippos going from A to B. Um, but the rest of it has absolutely no cohesive meaning to to the zoo or to the build or whatever it's just like a slap of land um, but it could be so much more and it's very well located actually in the zoo and there is a lot of things we can do with it now um, this has been a franchise zoo so most of the things you see in the zoo are kind of where ran in terms of having ATMs and benches and bins and education boards and stuff like that. I kind of want to maintain that in a way but as this is sandbox now I uh, kind of got rid of my disease, you know, I basically put a put an aspirin in, is that even a thing in English or in England, I should say, I mean, it's the, it's the wording of this medication, but whatever, um, and we, we got rid of it, uh, got rid of the headache that uh, franchise mode sometimes gives to me, and mostly that was the constraint of being in a time limit, since doing it as like a let's play part, whatever, we will have a let's play part at the end of the video, for all of you who like the let's play part. Now, the fixer upper of this zoo is something that that you guys all voted for, so hopefully you're all there. But now back to the mystery of YouTube. This video in the past has had uh, quite some views. I think it's been almost 15,000 plus views. And if everything goes as normal, this video over here should not even have one third of the videos. Despite the fact that my channel has almost doubled the amount of subs and um, the game has evolved quite a bit. But the recency element of you know, a video and, and stuff is always a thing. And back at the day, this new overpass thing was kind of something special that hasn't been seen so much before. And so that gives the video acceleration beyond its capabilities of being a good video. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, actually, the thing is building this overpass with the technique isn't that hard. And I made quite a good kind of screenshot and, you know, stuff like that. But this is it. <laughs> the video did not deserve that many views. I've got other videos that took literally a hundred times more time and effort to make and they not even have one tenth of the views. It is fun, you know, and so this refurbishment is always kind of fun to do because I also always remember, I almost always remember every single video I made. I I do have quite a photographic um, memory and I'll also do have quite a good memory in terms of what I did when I do certain things like which kind of music I was listening to or audiobook or whatnot and I really do remember that I listened to um, an Eminem album <laughs> during during this build uh, and it's been the last time before I came back to Eminem beginning this week uh, this year so that was the end 
uh, of this, uh, basically the beginning of the big gap I closed at the beginning of this year. Now, I talked a lot about uh, the caveat of this build and blah, 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 why it was so bad. Now we turn it good. And the first thing I did is I made a massive, like a massive uh, cover for the ugliness of what this tank is. So, um, as in a real zoo, and to tie it in, you need not only massive structures that kind of look good in a way, and I decided to go to this very uh, much already proven method of using these uh, fake rock thingies as like a wall, putting some, you know, mud pieces in and stuff like that, making it look like a bit of grunge and here and there, and then putting in a very classical zoo fence. I mean, remember we are going back into a kind of a, z a city zoo, um, vibe, which is cool because I've never done this really as in a uh, s speed build for Sandbox, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's been also fun doing that for a franchise, but now we are doing it a bit more severe in a uh, Sandbox build. Also, I may add that I will keep the uh, settings on with franchise mode, so that means our animals still require all the things that they would require in franchise mode. The only thing is that we do have infinite money, and I will eventually turn, out, uh, turn off education because I still don't like the way how the game handles that, but that's that's a different story. Now I started with these gigantic covers and like a classical zoo um, fence over here. A couple of things I will do, uh, as you can see very much at the beginning, uh, at the at the oh my god, at the screen right now. Um, I'm not going to put the fence super perfectly fine down to the path. The reason why I do this is to take a little bit away from the um, absurd perfection that these pathings. Um, do in the park like this. Um, I didn't fix up the left hand, but you will see in the video that I do fix up the right side. So I will always add a couple of decals here and there, a bit of dirt, a bit of, you know, all... Like in a zoo, you will never have that perfect edge and you will never have that perfect pathway. So this is why um, I do put these things always a little bit offset of the pathing path and then later on I'm going to put certain things in to make it look good. Uh, I say always, but I mean often. Sometimes I'm just too lazy to do that. And sometimes there are obviously also moments where perfection makes sense. So if that is, it always comes down to what your story is you want to tell. So if you want to tell a story of an old city zoo, that has, you know, been there for a while and most city zoos are quite old in at least like in Europe. Um, so if you're lucky, they have seen the sign of the times and, and got rid of most of the animals that never will be happy in a city zoo. But, and you know, then, then the zoo itself will also feel old. You've got a lot of grunge in, you've got a lot of old concrete, you've got a lot of dirt and a lot of stuff is overgrown and, you know, especially maintaining uh, a zoo like that is quite heavy. Um, so these things come into play when you consider designing it realistically or not even realistically in a way that you have to be very realistic with everything, but selling the idea of a certain area, making it look like as if it could be from a city zoo. These kind of things help if you think about these. Uh, would it be very modern, nice and stuff like that? Or would it be dirty? Would it be, would it be easy to clean or not? Would it be necessary to clean or not? So these kind of questions um, are very simple, but super effective. And the next thing, which is super effective to make a habitat a lot better, is, well, get rid of the in-game barrier walls. <laughs> it's easier said than done sometimes in the franchise, but oh boy, 99% of the times they do not really you know, suit. Um, but I mean, we have the beauty of a null fence, so that's not really that much of an issue. And I wanted to have some more fences. We do have the hippopotamus in here, so that means they are very easy to contain when it comes to making fences and stuff. You just need to have a massive fence and um, either a ditch or water in front of it and uh, you're good to go. So they can't really jump or anything, but they're pretty strong, so consider that. So whatever you do, you need to um, always keep in mind that there are rather strong and you have to have stuff that you know kind of stops them from running into something so I put a little bit of a water bottom down there as if this could be just like a natural barrier they could drink from it maybe or just you know go for a little bath and then we have obviously these two massive bottom of waters I will say though that um, one of those two will be uh, shrunken down a little and that's the right one it's still 
uh, an insane amount of uh, water they have there. But uh, there is not really that much needed to take away from them in terms of space. We can keep the space for the hippos. That's totally fine. I just want to change a bit of the viewing angles and stuff like that. But um, back to the tip I gave you a couple of minutes ago. This is another wonderful tip over here. Um, basically, the, the one person who reminded me of doing that is the wonderful lighter. He did this in my realistic zoo habitats or as we call it nowadays the realistic zoo and if you put down bamboo in real life i don't know who of you have a, has a garden or has ever worked in a garden if you put down bamboo it will spread <laughs> i'm gonna say it the way it is it'll be everywhere if you do not contain it and the reason why is because they're fast growing and going through the roots to other areas um so you have to contain that in a way and i put down these kind of things that you would have in in planting stuff uh as if you would you know kind of try to contain the bamboo a little and so I did over here and the the good thing is you can hide that always with putting some flowers down stuff like that and you know I, I used with the almost black dark black anthracite kind of color graphite color is maybe even better to say anyways I chose a color that is very subtle and should not take too much attention and then I tried making a couple of nice elements around here the pathing and that's very simple how you can already change the face of an area really quickly without much effort and so I used a lot of bamboo because bamboo is a very good plant to hide certain things and therefore also used very often it's cheap it doesn't really require that much water it also just in general doesn't require that much care so uh, that's why bamboo is such a thankful uh, partner in any garden design so uh, yeah that that's mainly the reason why i went this route you can see i also plant like a little uh, gap over here a little niche in which you can put some uh wonderful benches and then I search for a pretty good tree that would round up this area. I wanted to have something that acts like a focus point to make it not too boring that breaks a little bit with the mood of the area and then I started adding some more foliage here and there. As I said we are in a city zoo that has already seen something uh, and I imagine that this viewing over here has been refurbished after a time or maybe even added so that's the that's the idea why it looks quite a bit different. Um, I opted for some other ground designs to make sure that this area looks a little bit more fleshed out and planned and logic if you will i, th I think it's really good it, it turned out being very neat um maybe a little bit too neat a little bit too tidy uh, i i see what i can do about that in the next episode because we will tackle the upper area here we do have the pygmy hippo in another habitat but uh that's pretty nice too and just another thing i learned by watching other people's great work so what you do also um, want to make sure is that certain viewing angles, uh, especially these um, big windows, are not very visible for the animal actually. So you want to make sure that they do not feel stressed, especially hippos. It's not a good idea to make them crush into, uh, into a glass wall. So I put a lot of stuff in front of it so that the hippo is not really connected too much to the, to the grass. And I mean, yes, uh, to the glass, but people have to still get a view of them or like a glimpse of them. And that's why I put in these uh, um, gaps in between. So you can look through the elephant grass into the habitat, still get a glimpse of them, but the hippos are not annoyed by the people too much. At least that's the idea. Yeah, then I um, ensured that this building has a bit more of a realistic size, uh, making sure that the imagination lets us believe that this is the entire shelter for our beloved hippos and making sure that also the accessibility is given and just a couple of little things here and there. But th not looking only at what we've done for the habitat, I think we have already been uh, giving certain elements a lot more care now that we can use them throughout the zoo, making sure that a certain uh, backstage area is treated as it should be. As you can tell over here, I made sure that this is like a very nice entry towards the um, staff area. And with that also making sure that um, it's not really visible to the guest, but at the same time, it's a good entrance and still remains enough space to realistically bring the animals in because we still do not have a, 
a spot for that, which is going to be added over here. But yeah, that's mostly been it. I, uh, I, I think the first refurbishment looks fantastic. And I do have a before and after for you. I actually, I think I actually have that for the screenshot or thumbnail anyway. So um, I positioned the camera in the right position. I 99% of the time I do forget about that. So be, be proud of me that this time around I did. And also if you're missing out on any DLCs or any games you want, make sure to check out Instant Gaming. Link is in the description. It's not officially sponsored today, but uh, yeah, just have a look. If you find something, there is some good stuff online right now. So let's have a look now at the comparison. All right, look, it's already a lot better. Uh, we are in the camera that shows the comparison between before and after, but uh, as promised, I will guide you through what I've changed here and what will change effectively in this area. Now, um, let me jump out of this one and show you around. I think this is very important. Um, as you can tell, the entrance to this whole area has actually become an entrance. You don't even see this uh, tunnel so much anymore, but you can see them go over and it all becomes a little bit more exciting once you go here, you know? It just makes so much more sense to go in to actually see something and not have this already spoiled to you from the beginning. A couple of little fixer-uppers have to be done in here, but most of it I like the simplicity of it. Um, but there have to be some rocks and stuff over here that looks kind of unfinished, but we'll do that. Um, the reason why I didn't do this in today's video is because I want to tie this all in with this plaza. Now, I, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Let's first of all have a look at what I changed. Um, so first things first, I said that we changed the um, main look of the entrance to that area, but we also changed this entire viewing. Um, it is still an insanely big viewing and I am not entirely sure if I will leave it that way. I mean, it's, let me just get a person for scale. Uh, there you go. You can just come over real quick. So, as you can tell, that is pretty insane over here. I mean, this is, what is that? Six meters, eight meters, I can't even tell. Could have been eight meters. Let me just quickly measure that. Uh, because <clears throat> it is absolutely ridiculous to have something that large. Yeah, it, it kind of is six, six meters. Yeah, it's almost exactly six meters. I don't know, maybe four would have done it too. Uh, so maybe we're gonna lower this all down and make like a much bigger habitat for them. Uh, so to get the point across and that will also make the uh, waterfall more beautiful. The reason why I haven't done this is pretty simple because it's all tied together with this huge habitat in the back. So I will need to make a huge change to this entire area here uh, because that is part of the larger Africa area. So we do have the hippo here, which is good, but we also need um, something bigger over here. Now, that's gonna be exciting because I may be able to bring those two together in a much nicer way and much more city zoo style. And this would be an entire water management that goes all the way down here. We could connect all the buildings. It makes a lot more sense uh, to me to really boil this on together. If you have uh, ideas, please let me know in the comments down below. They would be of great value. Now, uh, this wall for over here is maybe just like a placeholder, but what is not a placeholder is um, how I have tackled this area. You can see there is like a little ditch over here now uh, with a couple of plants that need to be lowered down as well uh, just to make it look better. Yeah, whatever. Uh, gotta have to fix this with the whole overhaul. Uh, as you can see, there's also quite a lot of litter over here. Uh, we've got a new viewing opportunity with these um, glass panels over here. And again, the same as said in the time lapse, I have to make sure that they don't come too close. So we're gonna put some pillars and pollers and stuff in front of it um, but also the main building on the other side is now uh, more or less done I will just cover up these things a bit more tidy put some concrete on the ground put a go uh, yeah, like door here actually you know what we can just copy that over and then just plop it down here already done so that's the easy part and uh, yeah I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this side maybe just a couple of rocks here because no one can see anything and that is good so there's like a floating tree here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's the main idea. It still is relatively humongous. So I may also just shrink down the whole habitat a little and, and give the Africa habitat a little more space. Uh, I think this is the most realistic thing I will do. But yeah, so that's the refurbishment uh, part one, I should say, of Oak Street. Just to give you a little overview, there is quite some stuff to do. Uh, there, there are some areas I'm very pleased with. Uh, for example, the entire uh, Australia house is pretty neat. I may just add a couple of little things to it and that's that. But also um, some of the other areas are good. The gorilla area is nice. We just need to do some little fixer uppers here and there. Um, we also can get rid of these glass panels. They have only been here for um, the stress factor, but we will be able to do that in a different way. Mm. 
Then we do have this Rhino Habitat, which is absolutely not cool. Uh, it's okay-ish, but it's not good, so that can be fixed. The Snow Leopard Habitat has to be fixed uh, uh, as well. But the more we go into the front part, there is already quite a lot of good stuff, as you can tell. Uh, this habitat in here is pretty neat, uh, but the one thing I want to change is the hyenas at some point. So yeah, that is very good. One thing I love is the Siberian tiger habitat. Is it the Siberian Bengal? I think it's the Bengal tiger, yeah. There you go. Um, very pleased with that one still. I, I really feel like this is a typical zoo habitat and I really do love it. We do even have like the underground, or not underground, but cave view. We might be able to improve that one, but uh, other than that, it looks good. And a whole bunch of path updates. Pathing is, yeah, potentially the biggest uh, issue in this park. You can see over here it's neat and fine so far, but the more you get to the back part of the zoo, it's quite a mess. Um, yeah, the Asia area is still okay. Uh, might get some fixes in here as well, just for the sake of it, but that's almost it. So um, quite some work for us to do, but I'm very pleased to have tackled that because I feel like it's a very fun challenge to fix myself, you know. Oh my god. Um, that's gonna be good. But yeah, that's been it for today's episode. I really hope you like the fix wrapper. Let me know in the comments down below. We need to get the comments running again, guys. So please let me know what you think of this idea of the fix wrapper. And also let me know if there's anything you want to to see specifically in here. Um, maybe a story about your your most well-known city zoo, whatever. Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so so much, and I talk to you in the next one.